everyone, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. Today looks like it might be the day. Today may be the day that I received the last part of my four parts that I ordered to get this impeller shaft um, and auger assembly working and mounted onto the snowblower so that we can finally put the snowblower to bed. Uh, the reason why I know today may be the day is because I got a notification that my uh, gearbox gear has arrived. So we're going to do an early mailbag right off the bat. I paid uh, $15 for this on eBay, brand new. It's an MTD gear, works for all MTD snowblowers. And then I got another package from a subscriber, which I'll just open because we're doing a mailbag. Wow. It's like gold. <laughs> That's gold, Jerry. Gold. You like that, huh? I'm a big Seinfeld fan. And I know some of you guys are also big Seinfeld fans. You know where it comes from. That's uh, Kenny Banya, a hack. Some people call me a hack too. Anyway, uh, this is from Marshall Border, one of my uh, longtime subscribers. Uh, very loyal, always comments, and uh, watches every video. Uh, he told me he was gonna send me something <laughs> like a month ago, but uh, as you guys know, the postal service is a little overwhelmed at this time. Whoa. All right, here we go. Uh, he must be French because it says fragile. Oh, <laughs> fragile. Wow, you really packed this well, Marshall. Holy cow. How about that, huh? Guess you guys didn't know what my last name was. <laughs> now you know. Cool, huh? Holy cow. Now Marshall, do you have a machine that does this or did you do this by hand? That is incredible. It's a, uh, a desk name thing. You know, like if you're an executive at an, and you have an office, you have a nameplate that tells you who you are when you invite clients over to your office to have a meeting. Now they know your name. Bro, thank you so much, man. Gift from Marshall Border. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I would be remiss if I did not open every, if I didn't look in every little crevice of the insulation. And look, there's a card with a note. I'm gonna read the note to you. I'm not gonna. Henry, wanted to send you something that will last you the rest of your life when you quit turning wrenches. Maybe I'll never quit. Well, I mean, if I get old and catch something and I'm gonna die, I guess I'll quit, you know, but uh, as long as I'm healthy, I'm still gonna be wrenching. Appreciate all your work and videos. I love them and watch all of them. Brandon Marshall. I'm sorry. B. Marshall Border. P.S. Scrolling is first passion and small engine repair work is my second hobby and passion and has been for 40 years. I've learned a lot by watching you. <laughs> Me? One never gets too old to learn. This is true. I mean, I learn stuff every day too from watching other YouTubers, you know what I mean? Hey, we all just share the wealth, you know what I mean? Share the knowledge and then you die. But hopefully before you die, you passed on the knowledge to somebody else. So uh, Marshall Border, custom scrolling over in, um, 
Jonesboro, Arkansas? Just want to make sure. Yeah, I was right. Jonesboro, Arkansas. So you boys are from Arkansas, huh? Well. Yeah, I like that movie too, a lot. Uh, I hope I don't get a copyright strike for using all those clips, but uh, if you use it for like less than five seconds, it should be okay. Especially if it, you know, goes into what you're trying to tell, you know what I mean? Anyway, as you guys know, uh, the impellers over here, I'm sorry, the auger blades over here had some rust and everything. I had a little bit of that mustard color yeller to just coat it a little bit. It didn't do it very well. I didn't prep it very well because it would take a lot. You know, you'd have to grind off all the paint and then primer it and then sand it and all that stuff. You crazy? I'm not doing that. Anyway, I just coated a little bit with the remaining amount of that uh, yellow paint. I got the same situation going on over here, okay? So, uh, I've got like quarter of this uh, Rust-Oleum Dark Hunter Green. This is the green that I used to paint uh, some of my green LT-1000 tractors, you know? I think Larry might have given that to me. Uh, so it's got like a quarter left. It's not exactly the same green as this, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. What I want to do is, uh, it's all rusted right around here, you know, and around here. And it's not going to look, you know, great, but it's going to have to look better than this. You know what I mean? Not to mention the fact that you want to coat a little bit to protect it against further rusting and exposure to the elements, you know? So I'm just going to use the remainder of this can and just go over it with the green. It's probably not going to match, but the contrast is going to be good with the yellow. You know what I mean? So it looks at least a little better. Um, you professional paint guys, don't give me a hard time, okay? Would you rather I not do it at all? You know what I mean? So this process is gonna take a very long time. Uh, my putting the impeller, the impeller shaft, the gearbox together, the gear, finding out which direction the gear is supposed to go, all that, right? And it would probably take two hours for this video to go. There are lots of other videos that are much better than mine, much better. And uh, you can watch those if you wanna put it together. But um, we're gonna time lapse all the stuff I'm gonna do, including getting those two gearbox sandwiches, the side pieces, out of that soaking of gas overnight. I'm gonna use a toothbrush and kind of clean it out, and then uh, we'll go from there. So here's a time lapse up to when I think you should watch. <laughs> Thank you.
So I've got it all together. Um, I wasn't sure about the direction and everything. So I went to go look at the other beast. And apparently uh, the shaft goes this way. The rounded part is on the bottom, flat part is on the top. As you can see, I siliconed it, right? And it looks uh, pretty good. You can see over here that it looks like it's not really together because I wasn't able to get the self-tapping screws in there. So I might have to do some drilling. I wanted to put the impellers on, uh, the, bl uh, the auger blades on just to see the direction. And this turns uh, clockwise so that when you turn it clockwise, I think it goes clockwise. I I'd have to make sure again, but uh, also during this time, um, it cracked right there. You see that? A small hairline crack there. Significant enough that it might leak fuel, uh, oil, or, sorry, grease. So I'm gonna get some JB Weld, mix it up and fix that crack. I think that'll be okay. Then I'm gonna drill a hole in there and the other side and throw some, throw a uh, self-tapper in there. Self-tapper wouldn't, because there's so much lubrication, it wouldn't grip and it wouldn't make a hole. And then I have to confirm once again about the, uh, angle of the gearbox whether it's this way or upside down uh, whether or not i have the gear in on the right side you know what i mean because it the gear itself goes diagonally i don't know if it's this way or that way you know so i have to go and look a little bit more and uh fix that crack put in the bolts to the gearbox make sure that uh, the auger blades are aligned correctly and spinning correctly so I have to do all that. So I uh, couldn't for the life of me drill a hole through that broken nut that's in there. Neither could I do that. Uh, so I decided to move on and fix the crack with JB Weld. While I was fixing the crack with JB Weld, I thought to myself, well, the only reason why I couldn't get that through there was because the, the bolt was in there, right? So what if I just sealed the hole altogether? Well, then this part here would have like a little gap there because it's not, you know, uh, pressed together strong enough like these are, right? 
So I decided I'm going to put JB Weld in the seams so that this is a permanent <laughs> encased gearbox. Um, yes, this is not the ideal way to do it. Of course, the other way to do it is to go buy a new gearbox, right? For a hundred dollars. Or maybe you could find one used for like 50 or something. But uh, I'm just going to hack it, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's permanently encased in JB Weld now. So uh, honestly, I was turning this shaft a little bit. And it's a little stiff. I'm not going to lie. So uh, I think uh, once we hook it up and if it gets going and moves around a bit, warms up, the lube inside starts to coat areas that weren't coated before it might loosen up a little bit but uh i don't know confidence on this working 65 percent but uh i really have no choice right now other than to continue with this and give it a try or go out and buy a new gearbox but uh being that this thing is not under any pressure you know what i'm saying um it's just grease inside a gearbox you know what i mean as long as the grease doesn't spill out it should be okay ideally so uh i'm gonna just put it on as you can see uh this came out okay actually the paint kind of matches pretty well so that's pretty good So I've got this stuff laid out over here. I wanted to show you um, the logic that I came to, all right? So when you're pulling the engine, right, it's going counterclockwise on the crankshaft, okay? Which means the belts are turning the auger and drive pulleys counterclockwise. Therefore, the impeller is spinning counterclockwise like this, right? And what that does is it scoops the snow and throws it out there. So this is going counterclockwise. That's going counterclockwise. This impeller shaft is going counterclockwise. When this thing goes counterclockwise, these blades actually go clockwise if you're looking at it from the side, downward, okay? Also the important part is you have to have the impeller blades go in the right direction, too. So they're going this way, downwards, scooping the snow. And also, there's an A formation. See the blades, how they're parallel towards an A? What happens is when they're spinning this way, right? They're also moving in, like that. The A is moving in. So it's pushing the snow, grabbing the snow, pushing it to the inside. This one is grabbing the snow and pushing it inward like that. When it pushes the snow inward like this, it grabs it over here with the impeller going this way. And these scoops scoop up the snow and throw it out the chute. So that's when you know it's correct. Also, I was worried about the hole here in the gearbox. Well, guess what? I was looking inside this bucket of stuff that came with it, and the stopper is in there. You just shove it in there like that. It doesn't seem like it's very tight at all. You know, maybe I'll shove some silicone in there and uh, bang it in there, you know? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to split this thing in half again.
So there you go. It took a little bit of doing. I had to split it again three more times because I didn't look at any instructions. So when I first put it on, I noticed that the spring, that's the uh, auger engagement cable, is wrapped around there. And I realized that I had to remove it again to get the spring to go into that lever, into this tensioner arm, right? That spring won't go in there because it's looped around a mini plastic pulley that I forgot to put in. So I had to break it again and put that in. Then when I, the third time I had to break it off was because I realized I couldn't get the spring into the lever without first loosening the part over there to give it slack. So that would go in there, you know what I mean? It needed slack. So to get slack from the other end, I had to remove that handle. <laughs> so I had to remove the handle to get the slack. Once I got the slack, I looped it around the pulley into the lever, uh, the tensioner arm, and then back up again and jig it, not jig it, but route it back into the hole again and put the hand, uh, handle back on. So that, that, su that sucked, okay? And then this, these two belts came up started coming off and then you had to wiggle it just a little bit you guys know what i mean right it was difficult okay but it's easier to put on the belts when it's split in half of course but with all that other stuff going on you got to hold this and give this tension otherwise it'll slip off while you're slipping it on so it's uh, splitting a snowblower is definitely a two-man job but uh i have my trusty chair there that helps me as that second man so I think I got it on together pretty well. It's uh, three bolts on this side, three bolts on the other side. Remember the spring onto the tensioner arm, right, to engage the um, auger. And then that little small plastic pulley there that I forgot to put on. So I had to break it in half again and put it back on. And then to make the slack and whatever, right? Uh, I just painted this uh, black real quick because it was like faded white, whatever. And I'm going to put the cover back on again. Uh, I'm going to wait until the paint kind of dries, the silicone kind of dries, the PB, JB weld kind of dries before I try it out. So um, I gotta tell you, this was not easy. I mean, especially when I had it in half, uh, it came with this extra collar and I couldn't figure out why it has this collar. And if you look at this collar, right, you'll see that it's, Thin on this side. I don't know how I'm going to explain this to you guys. If you look at this carefully, right, from the top, you'll notice it's more material on this side and less material on this side. Almost like an egg. Almost like when you turn it. You following what I'm saying or no? It's not perfectly centered. It's like offset. You know? You guys know what I mean? Man, it's hard to explain. Look at the look at the little bit between in, in here compared to that's that that's like one millimeter. This is like half a millimeter. You know what I mean? So um if I put this on there, I wouldn't be able to get the coupler on there. The spline coupler. And then I looked at my old one and I didn't have this. So I just left it out. So today, in several different time-lapse uh, sequences, uh, it took literally all day. Um, I think it's five hours I've been working on this thing, you know? Uh, it's really a two-man job when you break it in half, but if you have a chair, you could probably get away with doing it by yourself, which is what I did. It just took longer, you know? Uh, you needed somebody to hold this, hold that, put tension on this, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so today, we, uh, I greased the all the shafts, the impeller and the auger shafts, right? Uh, we put it on correctly, I think. Uh, we had a problem with the gearbox where it cracked. So I had to JB weld it. And then I couldn't get the two uh, broken bolts to self tap in there, right? Uh, so I just sealed it with JB weld, you know? Uh, like I said, it's not under pressure. It just has to keep the grease inside, you know what I mean? Uh, I did find the stopper that goes into the hole where you fill it, which is great. I put the hub grease with a combination of the NLGI number two spray grease from Lucas Oil Products. This stuff right here. This stuff filled the gaps between where the hub grease wasn't, you know? Uh, it was a 
great way to get the grease in there. I also put grease on the ends of the shafts, uh, where the bearings are, where the f uh, plastic flanges are, uh, the entire shaft of the um, thing. I need to put the... Uh, this is a problem, I think. Oh, okay. So I don't have any shear pins in here. So it has to go just in the right hole for the shear pins to flow smoothly. Uh, when we had it in half, I put the coupler on there, put the housing, uh, the two auger pulleys. By the way, I don't know why this has two auger pulleys and two belts for just the auger. Uh, it's stronger with the two, of course, but it could have just made it thicker, you know what I mean? So it has two auger pulleys, two auger belts. They don't do anything different. They just go around the same shaft, whatever. Um, pain in the butt was getting the plastic uh, auger engagement pulley guide for the cable. That was a pain in the butt. Because of that, I had to break it in half three more times. That sucked. But I wasn't going with any instructions. I was just going with open holes that I didn't know what belonged to and leftover stuff. I still have some leftover washers. These are shear, shear pin bolts. So I'll put these in and uh, we're going to give this a try tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the morning. Because the UPS guy screwed this up. I'm going to see you next time on Mowers and Blows. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye